History is a generous teacher against hubris for those who are humble enough to listen. Imagine for a moment a world in which all scientists and physicians prioritize the advancement of scientific and medical knowledge above all else. A world constantly honing the art of pursuing scientific possibility, no matter the cost. At face value, this goal sounds correct, noble even. But this characterization of scientific endeavor does not embody the complexity with which science should be conducted. While it sounds virtuous, this unbalanced mentality has yielded horrifying results throughout history because it neglects one crucial component, the human component. Even the most concrete scientific data must pass through multiple checkpoints before it interfaces with human patients. And the road connecting research with humanity is fraught with ethical landmines. Thus enters the rich tradition of bioethics. Bioethics is the art of navigating between what is possible and what is permissible within science and medicine. It seeks to balance scientific capability with moral and philosophical questions. Now, by definition, bioethics examines ethical issues arising from the fields of healthcare, medicine, and biological research. It's concerned with the moral implications of medical research and the consequences of that research on human life. There are four main principles of bioethics. Non-maleficence, beneficence, respect for autonomy, and justice. In the principle of respect for autonomy, individuals have the right to make their own decisions about their health and medical treatment. The principle of beneficence refers to the obligation of healthcare providers to always act in the best interest of their patients. Non-maleficence emphasizes the importance of not causing harm to patients, which is summed up in the common phrase, do no harm. And the principle of justice refers to the fair distribution of treatment and resources. These ethical principles help guide medical professionals and policymakers in making the correct ethical decisions and in ensuring that patients' rights and interests are protected. And when these principles are not prioritized, trouble can arise. Now, during my undergraduate studies, a favorite professor of mine introduced me to the world of bioethics, reshaping how I viewed science and medicine. Initially, I believed that the integration of science and medicine was inherently ethically sound. Until then, my education had instilled in me a strong sense of the infallibility of scientific authority. Everyone knows that one kid in the class whose god is science. It might sound like this. Science is the only thing we need to propel our species into the future. And as their classmate, it was hard for me to argue with them. Indeed, science has yielded remarkable achievements that have shaped our modern world. This never quite sat right with me, but in what world could I argue with such a concrete point of view? I had never known how to question such a position until I entered the classroom of that brilliant professor. He used historical examples to contextualize his arguments, and from there I began to build a new understanding and a toolkit for understanding the role that ethics and morality play in the fields of medicine and science. While acknowledging the many, many achievements of the scientific fields, my professor cautioned against scientism. Scientism is an excessive reliance on scientific methods in all fields, excessively deferring to what science says without employing a critical lens and an analysis of biases can lead to perilous outcomes, as has been demonstrated throughout history. A lesser known, yet important chapter of that history is the eugenics movement. Rooted in the idea of artificially enhancing the human gene pool, eugenics advocates for the promotion of specific traits and the suppression of others. 
coined in the late 1800s by Sir Francis Galton, a cousin of Charles Darwin, eugenics posited that intelligence, for example, was hereditary, and therefore, we should advocate for the reproduction of the intelligent and discourage the reproduction of those deemed less intelligent. This movement aimed to replicate nature's evolutionary mechanisms through modern science, and it swiftly gained traction in the early 1900s, finding favor among intellectuals and leaders. In the US, for example, over 30 states enacted eugenics laws, which included forced sterilization of those deemed unfit to reproduce, like the impoverished, the homeless, the mentally ill, and minorities like Native Americans and African Americans. This sounds cruel because it is cruel, but the worst manifestation of the eugenics movement would occur under the National Socialist Party during the 20th century. Now, popular depictions in media of the Nazis are that of these brutish figures, thugs, wearing ignorant expressions of racial superiority on their faces. But these depictions fall short. Much of the regime's rhetoric was actually underpinned by the seemingly logical arguments presented by respected German physicians and researchers. And this reveals to us a harrowing reality. The monstrous architects of the Holocaust were actually fundamentally human, in the same sense that we are. But they lost sight of their ethical duties as researchers and doctors. The documented atrocities of the Nazi scientists served as a cautionary tale, illustrating for us the peril of separating science from ethics. The Nazis propagated the notion that certain groups were biologically inferior, that's a scientific claim. And they use this notion to first justify coercive sterilization, and then euthanasia, and then ultimately mass murder. All of this driven by pseudoscientific reasoning. Their reliance on scientism blinded them to ethics, allowing for inhumane experimentation and incalculable suffering. This tragic history serves as a double warning a warning against forsaking bioethics, and a warning against embracing scientism. Regrettably, these sins echo into the future. Pernkoff Topographic Anatomy of Man is a famous medical textbook esteemed by the medical community for decades for its detailed anatomical drawings. But the images and illustrations inside the pages of this book are actually hand-drawn depictions of dissected victims of the Holocaust, used for decades in medical education. This, and the legacy of German physicians in the 20th century, is a hard truth that hangs over the head of the medical community, a persistent stain on its Hippocratic self-image. Now, highlighting Nazi actions as ethical violations is pretty straightforward and easy, but it's far from the only notable case. Numerous instances worldwide reveal human rights violations occurring in the name of science. The infamous Unit 731 was a research and development unit in the Imperial Japanese Army, responsible for conducting brutal human experimentation on thousands of prisoners of war. These experiments included the testing of various biological agents and toxins, painful live dissection, and the freezing of limbs in order to test phosphite treatments. The researchers of this unit cited scientific and military progress in order to justify these horrors. But in actuality, a lot of it was just scientific curiosity. Disturbingly, the work of these researchers, as well as the work of those Nazi scientists, have yielded enduring insights into the physical limits of the human body that are still relevant to the scientific community today. This information, while useful, was gained through immense suffering and loss. The researchers of 731 embraced scientism 
sidling eyewitness in order to pursue their actions. But we in the U.S. are not immune to our own grievous history of bioethical violations. The Tuskegee syphilis experiment stands out as a glaring example of ethical violation and crime. In 1932, the U.S. Public Health Service enlisted 600 black men, 400 of which had a pre-existing syphilis infection. They were lured into the study using promises of medical care, meals, and burial coverage. With their diagnosis concealed from them, these men received no treatment, even when penicillin emerged in the 1940s as the remedy. The researchers instead opted to simply monitor and observe the natural progression of the disease unto death. Shamefully, this experiment lasted for four decades, during which there were preventable deaths, transmission throughout the community, and other related health issues. The trauma, the lasting trauma, on these black families persists to this day, and the broken trust with the medical community persists to this day. The Tuskegee syphilis experiment is but one notable example among numerous betrayals that has contributed to the lasting fracture between the black community and the medical community. Since then, the global history of bioethical violations, atrocities, and crimes has thankfully led to the formation of bioethics committees, whose job is to keep researchers accountable in the realms of human experimentation. Their work has led to positive strides towards change and towards prevention of past atrocities and crimes. In addition to my undergraduate studies, bioethics training is a prominent feature of my medical school. And it's there that I actually learned about some of the scientific knowledge that was gained at the expense of human rights. This education opened up an important discussion on balancing the utility of scientific knowledge with their horrific historic origins. While acknowledging the progress and the change that has occurred in the realm of bioethics, there's also things to note about the ongoing discussions and debates in the field. One such area is artificial intelligence and gene editing, emerging technologies. How much control should an individual have over their genetic makeup? And are we as a society prepared to deal with the consequences of manipulating the gene pool? Artificial intelligence in the healthcare setting brings up a number of questions about the implications of using algorithms to determine and direct diagnoses and treatment decisions. These are some of the ongoing debates, but there's also discussions about healthcare access and allocation, end of life care, and reproductive rights. These debates reflect an ongoing effort to balance scientific progress with bioethical principles and the well being of patients and society as a whole. Bioethics is a discussion on the complex implementation of relatively simple principles. Again, respect for autonomy, beneficence, non-maleficence, and justice. It's a discussion that has left its distinctive hue on the grand canvas of human history. As pertinent as it is to society as a whole, bioethics also involves the individual. On an individual level, it is essential for one to examine one's own ethical views and to understand how those views fit into the historic ethics conversation. Doing so allows one to balance both the strengths and weaknesses of their position. An apprehension of these concepts is not simply a matter of curiosity, but of practicality. To engage in ethical situations without first understanding and meditating on ethical principles is akin to giving oneself over to one's emotions without ever analyzing the rationality of one's reactions. Therefore, anyone, but especially those who work in medicine, would benefit greatly from a general understanding of the fragile balance of bioethics in the execution of scientific and medical research. 
I believe this to be true of myself as a current medical student and future physician, and I aim to apply these principles to my future practice and to continue to speak about their importance. It's also vital that we understand and appreciate the dark and complicated history that has led to this moment in bioethics, and this cannot be overstated. Learning from the history of bioethics helps equip physicians with a lens through which they can view both the cold hard science and the human patients standing before them. Practitioners of medicine who fail to properly consider these principles do so at their patient's peril, as well as their own. Such an understanding and appreciation for bioethics is heavy and burdens, and yet, is also an important necessity for fully appreciating the beautiful art of medicine. Thank you.